The 3v3 for towers and tables, no tables and towers here, has come to a close. We have a lot of interesting rogue and meta for you guys, including Animancipators and some of your other top picks for this metagame. Don't be like the 33.8% of you guys have not smashed living crap out of that subscribe button. Smash it so we can get to 102,000. I also love how they misspelled Battle of Chaos down here for this, but disregard that, all right? They were in a rush to get these out. So we have an Emancipator here as your first list we're going to be looking at here. Top four looks like it internally split this down the middle here. So all these top four lists are going to be worth your time to look at here. But yeah, an Emancipator deck combos still makes Dragoon. It's like I'm in a time machine here looking at what this deck can still possibly do. Gotta love combo, ladies and gentlemen. Next up here was Eldlich, but we have the Magician Souls package here. I'm glad to see that the Magician Souls package has made a splash return back into the game for a deck like Eldlich to be able to capitalize, get that additional draw power. And of course, you see your trap card line up there. That's going to be the reason why you guys will see success with a deck like this for this format, because the power scaling that this deck has really offsets the whole format. It's amazing. And the last list for this team was actually your standard virtual world. I had low expectations going into this too, but man, oh man, I'm glad to see that, you know, virtual world brave is the deck. All right. Of course, like I said, we've seen two variants of this having success this format, but the Brave package has just made this deck so much superior. You know, it's amazing what a Griffin Rider can do and punish the opponent on, ladies and gentlemen. I, I absolutely think that this deck is scary. Next up here for Return of the Frog, we have another Virtual World list. Exact same thing here, but this one got a little bit spicy here. We're main decking one tie A, so you can get a free banish off of a worm set up on maybe a back end or extension player. I also see we have Mystic Minds built into this deck. Ah, yes, the full degeneracy of being a degenerate out here, ladies and gentlemen, so that you guys get full advantage of everything in the modern era format. All right, next up here, we have Sky Striker. Ooh, they maximized on triple afterburners. This deck also, we're no DP, ladies and gentlemen. That means that you got to see a control variant of this deck pop up and find success, especially in an event like this. I am not disappointed in seeing this. Full. Wow, we're not even, well, I mean, we're not playing evenly, but triple lightning storm, triple afterburners, clean up aisle nine. All right, next up here, the last one for this list was Sword Soul Tenny or basically Synchro Turbo Toolbox. Um, one interesting thing I see about this is we have two Illusion Magicians, one Magician Souls. Technically, that Magician Souls is a free body that you can drop onto the field and start to capitalize on and win against the opponent. And your opponent the entire time is just going to look at that and go, oh, like, that's, that's some free advantage you got there, partner. Yeah, that's that's the power of it. Fourth place, continue on here, BB for Layton. I see that we have, yes, ladies and gentlemen, we have, yep, yeah, uh, normal summon Alistair.deck. Who doesn't love the fact that Alistair the Invoker is still such a powerful card? Uh, honestly, Winda plus friends of the deck. Still very good. I see we have evenly matches down here. We have Tikaboos in the main deck, and we're still maining them there, Nibiru's. And once again, another example of why you can play Ghost Ogre in this format and still find success with it. Absolutely no stranger there. Next up here, we have Praying Kids. Ah, uh, yes. This particular build of Praying Kids, though, does not like background. No, 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 no. We actually are main decking Lightning Storms here to kind of curve out some of the... Uh, I guess more abuse that kind of came with this format. All right, huh. I actually wonder what their turnover rate for success because of the Lightning Storm actually was and how much that they actually ended up seeing this to make that much of a difference for the games. And then we also had another Phantom Knight list, yay. Um, I don't have much else to really say about Phantom Knights at this point in time, ladies and gentlemen, but Droplet puts in a lot of work here. And honestly, if you can fit in the three Tullys, I know a lot of people have been trying out two versus three. Um, but at the end of the day, it's whatever your build can sustain in terms of those numbers. And it should work out relatively well for you to find success with it. Free rank threes. Next up here is, yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is Spellbook slash Dogmatica dot deck. What in the world? So this is just 
Okay. Spellbook power go. I look at this list and I really want to see invoked in here. And then you're like, no, you don't need it. Um, yes, we are also playing that one really darn weird Dogmatica card that everybody threw away out of their booster packs out here. Secret Village built into the main deck, by the way. It's such a weird pile. Next up here's another Phantom Knight list. Yay! This one's playing Crossout Designators. Interesting enough, Crossout, this format, has actually gained a lot of popularity. Uh, Crossout is such a good card if you just end up playing about 95% mirror matches. And that will be the reason why you will win a lot of those mirror matches, um, because Crossout Designator actually is able to exist right now. We just needed a format like this for Crossout to be relevant. Next up here we had... Is this just, this is Raid Raptor Turbo Luna Light Toolbox with Tri Brigade built into it. So you just want to get the best of both worlds here. You want to be able to get access to that Exceed Toolbox. You want to see that tanky. You're gritting your teeth to see that tanky so that you can capitalize. I guess this is what a modern era toolbox looks like, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you also get access to Make Infinity in here. Um, that's kind of scary, actually. Gotta love success. All right, onwards to top eight here. We have Numeron slash Mystic Mind dot deck. So we just Mystic Mind our opponent, right, until they can't do anything. We have limb removals in here. We have World Dino Wrestling Arena. <laughs> Uh, this, ladies and gentlemen, is the evolution of Numeron, the way it looks, and okay, very, very interesting, man. I'm glad to see that this got to have success. Awesome. Next up here, another virtual world list. Yay. I don't have anything particularly too crazy to say about this list. 43 cards. Looks like it worked out. I see that we have the droplets built in here and of course we have a token collector in the side deck to kind of counteract some of those choices in the meta another list here for this team was flunderies we have the icarus attacks built in here so you can kind of curve out some of the more abuse in the format shout out to d shifter for just being the absolute best card in modern era Yu-Gi-Oh. next up here was another phantom knight list now all things considered here um, 40 cards is fine. I see that we have three Tullys built in here. We have the Psychic Package, and we have full board breaking capabilities in here. And we have Super Polys on the side. All right. Next up here is another Flanderies list. Oh, boy. We're just going full on swinging here. I see that we have the Ryza. We also are playing Snell. I'm not really sure how I feel about Snell. Um, in this deck, uh, considering we have double M pen, Snell, and this, I feel like you could get away with playing Apex Avion and get better results. I don't know, like, how accurate that sounds to a lot of players, but I, I think you could still enjoy Apex in the main deck here. And the last list for this team was another Phantom Knight list. Yay! Uh, e Tully's 42 cards for this variant. Um, yeah, nothing sticks out to me too well. At least the other list had super polys. That was interesting. Next up, here's a hero list. Oh, we have double D in here for our plasma. We're actually main decking the plasma for the full control here with these. Um, I actually find that that's interesting. I know a lot of players have looked at playing this in the side deck, but seeing this in the main deck is very interesting. This build has a lot more hate, I feel like, built into fine success right now. Uh, we also had a Phantom Knight list for this team as well. Standard as crap, man. I do like uh, seeing Red Reboot running around, though, as a very nice one of Yield Pinkertops. And of course, I think Gamma's probably a good pick for these as well. And then the last list on this team was a Sword Soul variant playing frickin' 51 cards. Of course, you gotta love the tool power that this card gives you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, don't underestimate what the toolboxing capabilities of this deck can do. All things considered, um, I think this is one of the sleeper decks in the modern format here. Next up here is Praying Kids yet again. All right, one card starters, the deck. I see that we have a pointer of the Red Lotuses down here as well. That's a little bit interesting of a tech choice. Uh, Forbidden Droplets, of course, for the board breaking. Okay. Next list here is another Flanderies list. Once again, we're main decking those Crossout Designators. There's something about Crossout Designator in this format that Flanderies just doesn't want to get punished by. Um, also, this build got to have success with Droll and Lockbird. And last list here, ah, oh, it's a Synchro Toolbox mini sword soul engine aka the worm synchro deck uh, you basically just capitalize on 
the whole Rose Dragon package, climb up, use those free extendy chicken tendies that you get out here from those good old, yeah, that's just this is just synchro good stuff. Tool, toolbox. So, guys, what do you think about these decks? Please do comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. Make sure you guys smash the crap out of that subscribe button. See so you guys on my Zombie Ross content. And I'll see your beautiful faces back here later on in the day, guys. Peace out. Patrons, thank you. Uh. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.